Mobile World Congress. And who are you? My name is Jakob Roppola. I'm a senior designer from Yola. Senior there, designer? Does there that you mean go. You make the UI? Yeah, basically, we're, we have a design team that works with uh, all the components and uh, applications and the framework itself. So, so, uh, so it's Sailfish OS, you call it, right? Yeah, that's it's like the, the latest Migo. Or what do you, what basically, is it? that's uh, that's where our background is. So we did the uh, N9 and N900, if people remember. So those were really uh, uh, nice, nice products and nice devices. Uh, they all had uh, their. Uh, so made made out of the R and D offices of Nokia, right? Kind of mostly. Yeah, we that's our background. We are we all, are you all Nokia employees, ex Nokia. Yeah, uh, internal and external. I was personally external. Uh, external, yeah. Yeah, but because it's open source, there was some yeah. bunch of open source developers. Yes, and we we still have those. Uh, so we have a strong community working with uh, applications and uh, working with the. Uh, with the device, so it's uh, it's heavily based on gesture uh, usage. So you double tap to unlock it, and with the upward motion, you go into your home view. And here you have your running apps. For example, let's open uh, calendar. Okay, and from an uh, application, I swipe from the edge to go back home. So it doesn't matter how uh, what size my hand is, because I can. Uh, the whole edge of the display function as my home button. All right, and you have all the apps in the bottom. You pull them up. Yeah. So uh, these are your running apps, and here you can find your installed apps. So if I, for example, open a clock application, it opens there, and it's at the top. There, I can peek what the apps are doing, what my time is, and system information, and just go back. I don't have to commit into going back home. So it's the home is all the running apps right here? Yeah. How do you remove, uh, or what do you call it? Uh, uh, you can you can long press to individually close them. Whoops, my bad. Like that. You and when you close, close, it frees up some RAM, or what does it do? Yeah, that's one thing it does, and it also makes the uh, makes the covers bigger, so you can maybe interact with them easier. Can you move them, uh, switch them around if you prefer? What's, uh, what no, needs to be the priority the, app and second priority yeah, app? Yeah, it's or the not? latest. It's the latest at the top, so it uh, brings it at the top. Is it that? Does it have a clever system to manage uh, resources? How does it manage? Uh, some app might use too much and not like kind of like that's the, it down. That's a quality control uh, question. So we like our apps to be lean and mean. So we don't want them to be uh, wasting system resources for nothing. So that's why they they should be done with good quality. Lean and mean, all of them. All because of them. one of the big things about the the challenges in Android, right, is to try to figure out which app is bloat and try to quiet it down yeah. in some yeah, I know. background, and then have other apps run all the time full speed because yeah. they're small. You yeah. don't have stuff like that. Uh, no, not in particular. So we only have you can close those and you can close them all if you like. But of course, you can know you can see, for example, from the terminal that if you're familiar with that, so you can see, of course, yeah. what uh, apps take more resources than others. So it's basically a command line you can use to figure out what which app is using the most uh, most system resources. So is the advantage here that uh, all the apps are kind of like native code stuff of going on? Of course, there is an advantage of using native apps. They're all native or is there some kind uh, of Java layer We are, layer we are also? binary compatible with Android, so you can take any APK file, download it and install it and it will run. So all of them? It's the same qu uh, same answer that any Android uh, manufacturer will give you. So it's not it's not 100%, it uh, depends uh, what uh, APIs it depends on. But basically, yes. And the Google Apps work, uh, or you need a hack, or is that well, not you, officially, right? Yeah, you, we have seen people uh, enable Google, uh, Google Play, so it's possible. Play even. Yeah. Nice. And Play and Maps and Gmail should work, not officially. Yeah, it's I, that's what I see. I You've can't, seen uh, people. <laughs> you, can't, you can't confirm here at the booth, yeah. right? So. Uh, to have this run, did you need to use uh, the 
BSP uh, package from uh, like you know like Ubuntu OS uh, using an Android BSP to make it run. Do you do any of that? Uh, we have RPM packages and those are native apps, so you can uh, you can install those. So what I mean, like uh, the whole oh, firmware, sorry. the firmware, does it run on any Android code or? Uh, there are Android devices. Uh, you should actually okay. go check uh, the uh, Yola lab. Okay. We have guys there uh, devoted to uh, hacking, okay. so they will show you how to uh, how Sailfish okay. runs on uh, Nexus 4 and okay. Galaxy S3. Uh, nice. Uh, how about uh, the performance of uh, Sailfish OS compared to Android on the same hardware? What do you think is the difference? Is there a faster performance or is it similar? To an Android device. Oops, I suck this. So, uh, in Android apps, let's uh, open, for example, what would be. I only have games here because most of these require uh, some sort of a. So you you have the full. Uh, uh, you have Dalvik engine or something running. Yeah. Full? It's an emulation. Emulation. So how about that, that UI? Uh, how, how has it changed since Migo? How do you choose to make a UI like this? Slides from the side and... Well, the uh, gesture-based navigation was always uh, core of Migo next to multitasking. So, because we all have different size hands, it's easier for everybody to use gestures to navigate between application instead of having a dedicated proxy key for going home or back. So if I now open settings application and I drill down into system settings and flight mode, oops, I didn't mean flight mode, I just can uh, push that page back and go into VLAN, oh, I didn't mean that either. So I can quickly navigate exactly where my finger is. I don't have to change my uh, hand uh, grip to go into a different views, a different locations, I can just uh, navigate where my finger is. Same thing is the, the home key, the home button functionality. So I can always easily Hello. go back, 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 main view, home, change application, uh, open a contact card, go back. No, it was this guy I want to see. Okay, he has email here. Oh no, I go back. I go home. It's really fast, really efficient, and it's it, it's based on muscle memory. After using this for a few weeks, there's no going back because it's really fast. So you and need to use it for three weeks. No. It's not like well, a, how would you uh, if you give it to someone who has never seen it before? There is some learning curve, no? Uh, it's it's funny. Uh, some people who have used like dumb phones before, so it's actually easier because they expect there is something they need to learn. But for some people who have used uh, Android, iOS, Windows Phone, they kind of uh, expect there to be a home button or there is a back button. But since there isn't, there it's like a, a bit of a ooh. What's okay. going on? Yeah. yeah. But it's funny. We have really like a, it's a polarizing experience, and we believe that we if you if you build something to someone, it will not fit everyone. So if you build it too generic. There's actually no character, and it loses its, its, its appeal. So I don't know. It's, so, we have had great response from uh, from people. Uh, even uh, with the beta quality, we had to launch it because we couldn't support uh, multiple devices. So we had to have a developer device available for people. So, this is it. Uh, the, no, this is uh, now the 1.0. So this is, uh, is this, since when? Uh, we launched last Christmas, so it's been there for a few months now. How much it cost? Uh, 399 euros. So it's a mid high, mid to high, uh, and in terms of price, it's a good Qualcomm CPU in there. It's dual core, nothing impressive in terms of spec, but we it's uh, we don't compare compete in spec, we compete in experience. Nice. But if 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 the if the latest and greatest hardware is your thing. Maybe then should wait for the sailfish to arrive on a, a good so, handset. So uh, which other hardware maker has announced making sailfish OS uh, Jola stuff? Actually, I have no uh, no idea about that. We have different people who are uh, 
more Nokia knowledgeable. Nokia has not, has not announced making one. Nokia has announced that they make an uh, Android device. That's, that's interesting, no? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. What do you think is going on in, in Finland? When people talk about Nokia Bad making winter. Android. <laughs> like all the people that were working in Nokia before, what's going on? It's a it's an interesting thing. Uh, I don't know. It's how how different fe uh, people feel about that. For me, it's just uh, it's interesting in many ways that it actually it allows some new things to happen. Supercell, Rovio, all that they wouldn't probably happen if it, if Nokia wouldn't uh, shift its focus into something else, and Yola wouldn't happen if things would have wouldn't ha happen the how so they did. So lots of things are happening. How many people in Yola? Uh, we have uh, something like 100 people. That's so, big. No, it's not. It's not it, big enough? It's, uh, uh, if you call, uh, like, uh, put it into pr uh, perspective that what we're doing, it's uh, it's minuscule. It's, it's tiny, teeny Sorry. tiny. We're building a product. We have our own phone and we are building uh, a spearheading, uh, an operating system development. It's really like nothing. So uh, you're basically exploiting a bunch of hardcore programmers to the maximum to make it work. Exploiting or? is such an ugly word. No, they're having fun, or they're having fun. We're having fun. I, having I'm fun. having fun. My uh, my family is uh, not having Sad? fun because Sad? <laughs> yeah. they miss you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So looking forward to uh, see what happens. Thanks a lot for. Do you have anything by. like uh, home replacements? Does that work? You know, like we can change the UI or is it not? Uh, not for now. It's uh, if you want to contribute, you can actually uh, build your own home. But it it requires some uh, some knowledge. Some yeah, knowledge. A lot of a lot of late night hacking. And it's a lot about uh, GPU acceleration for the UI. It's very important. Yeah, it's uh, GPU accelerated. So uh, we want to keep the UI mostly really minimal, minimalistic, so that we can still have capacity to run stuff uh, on the hood. Because smartphone is smart if it just has to focus on the uh, topmost app. So if there's no resources for system, it's a dumb phone. Because it's, you can't do stuff with uh, so, on the background. So is Jolla uh, 399 phone, is it free software? Anybody can use it for free or is it licensed? Uh, I don't know like, the exact terms how that works. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, I think you should uh, talk with someone else. I know the interface, so that's my okay. Okay. my area. Sorry about oh, that. That's cool. Thanks a lot. Thank no. you. What so, I want to do. So who are you? I'm Carsten Monk, Chief yes. Research Engineer at Jolla. So uh, this is the lab table, so I just want to show some of the things we have in the pipeline that we're going to be doing in the future. So during the next half year, uh, we are going to be uh, first to early adopters, uh, allow people to install Sailfish onto their Android devices, plus developers, that kind of stuff. And then afterwards, uh, it will be more towards users. So what you can see here is Samsung Galaxy S3 running Sailfish. This is ex it's exactly the same. Um, so you just like uh, install the firmware? Yeah, it's just it's just as easy as installing an Android ROM, but it's a completely different OS. And this is uh, Nexus uh, 4. As you can see, uh, you might have seen from the previous video, that it's exactly the same operating system uh, running. So it's Qualcomm 600 here? And this one is... Uh, yeah, this, this is 8960. I don't know what the number is. This is Exynos. Exynos. So that means you have optimized uh, Sailfish for those two? Uh, well, at least we, we haven't really done any particular optimization because it works pretty well out of the box because we are able to use the Android drivers, which is pretty much what we also want to demonstrate today is when you go to a factory in, let's say, China, China or Taiwan, and you go to an ODM there, and you can just say, well, give me an Android hardware adaptation, and, well, you can put Sailfish on top of that with ease. Nice. So, so suddenly you have a lot of different hardware you can is put Is that the Android BSP? Yes, exactly. So you run on top of a uh, totally open BSP that every hardware is working with? Well, you use the existing ATP BSP for the device, so it's not charging. So. Is it a secret? No, it's not How many different devices do you have on there? A bunch of different well, other ones? Maybe even the first you have Nexus? TCL Idle X. Idle X? Cool. That's like MediaTek, right? Yeah. That's MediaTek OctaCore? 
and uh, Xiaomi. And this is Xiaomi with the MediaTek or what CPU? Uh, no, Qualcomm? this is uh, Qualcomm as well. Qualcomm. So, so uh, does that mean every device will be able to support it or yeah, only well, some? Or how does it work? Quite a pilot release. If you can install your own kernel and you can install your own uh, file system, if you can install the Xeonic and Mod, you can pretty much install it. But uh, is it important to have some specific optimizations with GPU acceleration? Uh, yes, of course, because every GPU is different. So, for example, uh, so uh, the Qualcomm the uh, CPUs, uh, they don't like uh, if you do specific ways of uh, rendering, for example. But MediaTek ones have different ways of dealing with things. So, so that means a lot of work, or what does it mean? It means just that you have to be rendering in different ways on different GPUs. But it doesn't change the functionality of the UI as such. So, uh, since when uh, are these ROMs available? Uh, well, as I said, we're going to be uh, go going towards early adopters at first. Uh, we put out a press release just before MWC where there are some details about how you can sign up to be an early adopter. And then later we'll be pushing towards uh, users. So, uh, that's a, is there like any chance in the future there might be like a, a app you install on Android and it kind of like what uh, CyanogenMob Mob wanted to do, you know, the whole thing of, I don't know how it works. Like, uh, you it, it, click it, and it just installs. It's entirely possible. But it, otherwise, it's not very hard, right? You just no, connect to USB. It's, it's really easy. Okay. Cool. So, what, what. Nice. How many people are using this so far? Uh, the like software. This, 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 the the Spectral software. Well, it's just me and my team at the moment, but uh, Sailfish is on uh, all the devices we've been selling so far, obviously. There's the device over there yeah. since Christmas. And then uh, there it is. Can you say a couple uh, more things of, uh, about Sailfish OS, uh, the main advantage compared to Android? Um, well, many people will ask me that, and I'm not the marketing person. Okay. So. You would say uh, it's. It's different, uh, definitely different, and it's more gesture based. I feel I'm more efficient with it. It's very efficient, you are. It's uh, native code. Hardcore stuff. Yeah, well, it is. the funny thing is, it's actually well, the UI is described in uh, QTPML, so it uses the GPU to its fullest. Cool. 